Thank you.
Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the Honorable Vice President of India. Thank you.
honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the national anthem of the Republic of India. Honorable Vice President, Honorable Governor, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament, Distinguished Members of the Union, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tremendous privilege for me to welcome you to the 50th Union World Conference on Lung Health. This is truly an auspicious occasion. First of all, may I humbly express our deep gratitude that we are joined by the Honorable Vice President of India, Sri M. Venka Naidu, who graciously accepted our invitation to be the chief guest and to inaugurate our conference. Not only that, This occasion is also graced by the Honorable Governor of uh, Telangana, Dr. Tamil Sai Sundaranjan, It is also graced by the Honorable Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Medical Health and Family Welfare, um, Sri Etela Rajendra, and also Secretary Government of Telangana, Sri Shailendra Kumar Joshi. And President of the Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Sri M. Venka Shwalu. This conference is the fifth World 50th World Conference organized by the Union since the Union was founded in 1920. And this is a testimony to the sustained commitment of our members and supporters to work together to address the greatest public health challenge of our time. All of us in this hall today, scientists, researchers, doctors, nurses, governments, international agencies, advocates, and civil society are coming together as one union. Our common purpose is to end the scourge of tuberculosis and to start earnestly addressing the problem of lung disease, which kill millions and cause untold suffering uh, around the world. Our theme this, our theme this is ending emergency, science, leadership, action. Coming from 130 countries worldwide, we are gathered together here in Hyderabad to share the evidence, expertise, experience, and enthusiasm that is needed to eradicate tuberculosis and lung disease are all over the world. We need to turn political commitment into action. We want to develop tools and technical resources
to ensure that the ambitious targets that we have set for ourselves are actually met. And India is at the forefront of this war against tuberculosis. It is therefore most befitting that we are meeting here in India for the first time in over 50 years. I understand that the last time we were here, Honorable Vice President was uh, in 1957. This great country is at the very forefront of the battle against tuberculosis. The Indian government, led by the Prime Minister, has made the fight against TB a central priority and boldly pledged to end tuberculosis by 2025, five years ahead of the official United Nations uh, target for 2030. Even more impressively, this commitment has been backed with a pledge uh, of uh, significant financial resources, around $1.7 billion for the national TB strategy, uh, which is a joint um, initiative at union and state levels. One of the most exciting things that I read this year was the India TB report 2019 published in June uh, this year by the Minister of Health and Family Welfare. This clearly shows huge strides in India uh, that India is now making uh, in TB care and prevention uh, through engaging a wide array of stakeholders, including the private sector and communities, uh, to advance technological innovation and to ensure improved access to effective detection, diagnosis, and treatment of TB. This government has also increased investment in research, development, and data science. The Indian Council of Medical Research is now among the top four largest funders of TB research globally, and the National TB Program has made progress in finding persons with TB actively, including those with drug-resistant TB and also providing nutritional support for those patients who need such kind of support. Next year, we look forward to the results of the National Prevalence Survey, Disease Prevalence Survey, that is currently underway. I'm proud that the union has been part and parcel of this great initiative. Many of my colleagues and members based here in India have worked closely with the government in providing technical support implementation of key programs, and in engaging various stakeholders. Just to give an example, Challenge TB in India was led by the union with the Minister of Health and Welfare and funded by USID, and it brought together key stakeholders from health, government, the private sector, civil society, and the media to drive a call to action for a TB-free India and to advocate for the National Strategic Plan. Since 2013, Project Axia, led by the Union and funded by the Global Fund, has enabled the identification and testing of 2 million people in 128 districts across India. It has improved access to TB care and support, including reaching people who are most marginalized in society. Our volunteers and partners have helped more than 150,000 people to receive TB diagnosis and begin treatment. It is this painstaking work among the poorest and most vulnerable that is at the core of our joint effort to end the epidemic, and certainly it's not an easy task. Over the years, as a member of the union, and in the last three years, as the president of the union, we have continued to see uh, the amazing passion, the commitment, and the positive impact that the people who make up the union have had in the fight against tuberculosis. Impact is a term that is beloved of funders, but it is not always easy to measure. And this is well expressed recently by our head of Project Aksha here in India, Mr. Subrat Mohanty, and I hope he doesn't mind if I quote him. We can measure 
our impact in much of the work we do, but in terms of the lives we save, our impact is measurable. Those are the words of Mr. Subrat Mohanty. Thank you very much, and a very well, warm welcome to you all. And now I would like to ask uh, Jamie uh, Thompson to come and uh, uh, read a statement from the Prime Minister. I am honored to read a message from the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, dated 24 October 2019, New Delhi. I quote, it is heartwarming to learn that the International Union Against TB and Lung Disease, with the strong support of the Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, is hosting an international conference on lung disease and tuberculosis. Our earliest traditions advocated a healthy, disease-free lifestyle for all. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhin, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kaschit Duk Bhag Bhaveta. That is, may all be happy, may all be free from illness. In India, TB affects people's lives more than any communicable disease. We are committed to get rid of TB by 2025, five years ahead of the global target of 2030. The National Tra Strategic Plan to Eradicate TB has been made fully operational. For eradication of TB from the country, the role of doctors and workers is very crucial. The doctors, nurses, health workers, and other stakeholders must make more and more people aware of the need to diagnose and treat TB. Patients who get cured and overcome TB must also be actively involved in inspiring others to fight the disease successfully. We must strive for rooting out lung-related lung diseases and TB to enable the people to live a long, healthy, disease-free life. May this gathering of global experts share the latest experiences and chart out an action-oriented pathway to achieve intended outcome for all well-being of all. Best wishes for successful deliberations of the 50th Union World Conference on Lung Health, unquote. Now I'm honored to introduce the President of Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Sri M. Venkata Shuralu. respected Vice President of India, Honorable Governor, Minister of State for Family, Health and Family Welfare, Chaubriji, Minister of <coughs> Health and the Family Welfare, Government of Telangana, Sri Vital Rajendra Garu, President, Executive Director, and President-elect of the Union, distant guests in the conference hall. A very, very good evening to you. At the outset, I thank the Union people have, uh, for having selected Hyderabad to hold this very important conference of highest social value. In fact, they could get their inspiration from the Honorable Prime Minister of India to come to India to hold this conference. This team, a special team, has gone around the states of uh, the country and finally they could select Hyderabad as the best place for this event. And one of them was telling me, one of the organizers was telling me that the way the Chief Secretary has inspired them, it is something praiseworthy. Anyway, we would we'll have the opportunity to have it in Hyderabad, that too with the blessings of our beloved Vice President of India. There are many organizations at the national and international levels who have approached the Telangana Chamber of Commerce Industry to hold medical conferences. It is our routine habit. Every year we hold a 
medical uh, tourism conference, which will be attended by hundreds of people from different countries. This has got a difference because the government of India, the state government, and the people of Telangana are very much interested to see, to stop this emergency. They do not appreciate the prevalence of TB at the way it's growing now. Mr. Larry, who has played a key role in this conference, I am very happy to bring it to the notice of our Honorable President of India and others that a few members have come forward to me with, an, with their intention of spending some money to renovate the TB hospitals, which are in dilapidated condition. And there is every possibility for establishing one more uh, TB hospital in Hyderabad or in any part of the Telangana region. And uh, people have uh, come out with some sources and resources where who can go ahead with this in the next two, three months. Telangana Chamber of Commerce has appointed a separate committee, subcommittee, with, uh, with two experts. Dr. Shamsundar and Dr. Chaturvedi, who head these committees on TB and cancer, will be holding this conference most probably in the month of January. And uh, the people who are approaching us for financing these uh, two schemes under social responsibility, and I think we'll be able to succeed. And all this developments, all these happenings are being represented or being written in Techies journal, quarterly journal, and the, all these reports will have their appearance in the January issue of Telangana's House Journal. In fact, you have a very proactive government. The health minister is very keen when we went to him with the invitation. I, I did not believe he was with, I was with him for continuously three days asking many clarifications, many questions. And I had the opportunity of taking some important people to him, to his chamber, and who explained what's going, what is going to be done from Telangana Chamber of Commerce as far as the TB and cancer are concerned. And this is the government side. And all the, luckily all the officials from the health department are very much, they are very cooperating and they are themselves trying to know what is the status. And I think most probably this is going to be sea change in the health sector. Our another advantage is who have a governor who is a doctor. He, she, has, she was a, do, a, practi, a prominent doctor before she became a public figure. Her assistants have been continuously in touch with me to know many things. She has got a lot of academic interest and who have her support. And with the support of our honorable vice president and the governor, I'm sure this will take a very good shape. Most probably from the month of January, we are going to have a very big assignment on DB and it will definitely be informed and will be brought to the notice of the Vice President and Governor with all, every attention. Normally, the conferences which of this side, which are happening, the post... So the post-performance is not up to the mark. Conferences are taking place, reviews are not being done properly, and performance is not up to the mark in many companies. But I do not wish, I do not want the post-performance of this conference to be one of them. To be one of them. 
So, uh, so finally, what I want to assure all of you is, Telangana Chamber of Commerce is at the disposal of all the stakeholders, whoever want the support. And we will always be in, informing you through our journal about what is happening in uh, Telangana state, especially in Telangana state, because Hyderabad is one of the oldest places where the TB is treated. It, was, it is 80 years old in Telangana. So whatever you want, I am always at your disposal. Techie is always at your disposal. And I thank you all for uh, participating in this conference. Thank you very much. It's now my uh, great honor to introduce uh, uh, the Honorable Minister uh, of State for Health and Family Welfare, uh, Sri Ashwin Kumar Chobe, uh, to make uh, his remarks. Thank you. आप समस्त यहां आए हुए दुनिया के लगभग 100 से भी अधिक देशों के सभी प्रतिनिधिगण को मैं हृदय से भारत की इस धरती पर हैदराबाद के इस खूबसूरत शहर में आप सबका स्वागत करते हुए आप सबका अभिनंदन करता हूं हार्दिक अभिनंदन हमारे महामहिम उपराष्ट्रपति महोदय श्री वेंकैया नायडू जी जो इस कार्यक्रम के उद्घाटन के लिए यहां पधारे हुए हैं साथ ही यहां तेलंगाना के राज्यपाल डॉक्टर श्रीमती सौंदर्या राजन जी तेलंगाना के मंत्री स्वास्थ्य मंत्री श्री राजेंद्र जी साथ ही हमारे डॉक्टर जेरेमिया चक्या मुहा प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द यूनियन श्री एम बैंकर्सरुलो प्रेसिडेंट तेलंगाना चैम्बर ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री एंड ऑल द डिग्निटीज वेर यर एट प्रेजेंट जस्ट मैं भारत के इस धरती पर जहां लोका समस्ता सुखना भवंतु समस्त लोक में बसे हुए लोगों की शुभकामना और उनके सुखी और स्वस्थ रहने के लिए हम कामना करते हैं वहीं आज जो प्रधानमंत्री जी का संदेश आया सर्वे भवंतु सुखना सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्चंतु माँ कश्चित दुखभाग भवेत आप सभी सुखी रहें दुनिया भर के लोग सुखी और स्वस्थ रहे यही शुभकामना है मुझे खुशी है कि आज पचासवा ये लंग्स कॉन्फ्रेंस जो लंग का कॉन्फ्रेंस जो पचासवा होने जा रहा है ये गोल्डन जुबली अगले बार मनाएंगे और मुझे यह भी जानकारी मिली कि उन्नीस सौ सत्तावन में नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन में यहाँ कॉन्फ्रेंस पहला हुआ था उसके तिरसठ साल के बाद ये कॉन्फ्रेंस फिर भारत में हो रहा है हैदराबाद के इस पवित्र धरती पर हो रहा है मुझे खुशी है कि टीबी के लिए जो पूरे दुनिया भर के लोग देश के बड़े विशेषज्ञ चिकित्सकगण आए हैं यहाँ 1800 से भी ज़्यादा लोग इस हॉल में हैं और इसके ठीक बगल में दो हॉल है जहाँ चार से भी ज़्यादा डेलीगेट्स यहाँ आए हैं ये बगल के हॉल में भी वो बैठे हुए हैं वीडियो से देख रहे हैं मैं उनका भी स्वागत करता हूं भाइयों और बहनों आज जिस मुद्दे पर आज हम लोग यहाँ इकट्ठा हुए हैं मुझे विश्वास है कि आप इसमें खड़े उतरेंगे जो टेक्निकल सेशन आपके चार दिनों तक होने वाले हैं उसमें जो आप प्रस्ताव लाएंगे जो आप अच्छे विचार लाएंगे 
उस नॉलेज का उस ज्ञान का शेयर भी आप भारत सरकार के साथ करने का प्रयास करेंगे मुझे खुशी होगी जहाँ तक मुझे ध्यान में है कि हमारे प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी ने 14 मार्च 19 2018 को विज्ञान भवन दिल्ली से एक संदेश दिया था और उसमें टीबी उन्मूलन शिखर को उन्होंने संबोधित करते हुए और वह शुरुआत की थी एक जन आंदोलन का और इस कार्यक्रम के जरिए टीबी मुक्त भारत बनाने का उन्होंने आह्वान किया था मैं अभी ब्रिक्स कंट्री के हेल्थ मिनिस्टर्स कॉन्फ्रेंस से लौट के तुरंत हैदराबाद आ रहा हूँ वहाँ ब्रिक्स के पांचों देशों के लोगों ने अन्य प्रमुख विषयों के अलावा टीबी के बारे में उन्होंने विशेष रूप से अपना कर्तव्य दिखाया उन्होंने जो आश्वासन दिया है जब मैंने कहा कि हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने 2030 में सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल जो 2030 में टीबी मुक्त दुनिया को बनाना है वही भारत ने यह संकल्प लिया है प्रधानमंत्री श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के मार्गदर्शन में हम 2025 में टीबी मुक्त भारत बनाएंगे और इस विषय पर पूरे ब्रिक्स के कंट्रीज के सभी पांचों देशों ने काफ़ी इसको सराहाया और उन्होंने आश्वासन दिया कि हम उन्होंने अंत में जो डिक्लेरेशन हुआ उन्होंने इस विषय पर गंभीरता से लेते हुए कि हम तकनीकी दृष्टिकोण से भी और हर विश्वास के साथ हम सहयोग करने के लिए तैयार है वहाँ डब्ल्यू के और साथ ही हमारे जो पी पाहो स्टॉप टीवी पार्ट पार्टनरशिप के जो सदस्य वहाँ इकट्ठा थे जो यहाँ भी उसमें से बहुत लोग यहाँ आए हुए हैं मुझे खुशी है कि टीवी को 25 साल पहले डब्ल्यू द्वारा इमरजेंसी घोषित किया गया था और तभी से इसके खिलाफ अभियान चल रहा है लेकिन भारत पिछले काफ़ी समय से टीबी के खिलाफ लड़ाई लड़ रही है हम जितना सफलता हमें होनी चाहिए हम आश्वासन के साथ विश्वास के साथ और हम आगे बढ़ने के लिए कटिबद्ध हैं केंद्र और राज्य सरकारें 2025 तक भारत को छह रोग मुक्त बनाने के लिए जो संकल्प हम लिए हैं उसमें निश्चित रूप से राज्य सरकारों का बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा और राज्य सरकारों का बहुत बड़ा सहयोग उसमें से दिखाई पड़ता है और जिस तरह टीबी के देश की स्वास्थ्य पर असर डालता है उसे देखते हुए इसके खिलाफ लड़ाई भी जरूरी है और वार एगेंस्ट टीबी बी ये युद्ध हमें हमने छेड़ा है भारत इसमें अगुवाई करने के लिए तैयार है भारत में टीबी का प्रभाव सबसे ज़्यादा है हम जानते हैं कि पूरी दुनिया में जो खास करके ब्रिक्स कंट्री है ब्रिक्स कंट्री में 70 परसेंट टी वी सेवेंटी परसेंट टी इस ब्रिक्स में है पाँचों देश में उसमें से भारत में 27 परसेंट ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट टी के मरीज यहाँ हैं दुनिया में टी को ख़त्म करने के लिए 2030 का समय तय किया गया है लेकिन भारत ने जैसा कि मैंने पहले कहा कि 2025 है टी को भारत से मिटाने के लिए राज्य सरकारों का भी बहुत बड़ा सहयोग हमें मिल रहा है केंद्र और राज्य इस मिशन को हम आगे बढ़ाएंगे सभी राज्यों के मुख्यमंत्रियों को पत्र लिख कर के हमारे स्तर से विभाग के स्तर से इस मिशन को इस मिशन में शामिल होने के लिए हमने आग्रह अपील किया है हमने टीम इंडिया की घोषणा किया है और टीम इंडिया के रूप में इसको लेकर काम करना होगा टीबी का मरीज अपनी इच्छा शक्ति से जिस तरह इस बीमारी पर विजय प्राप्त करता है या दूसरों के लिए भी प्रेरणा का काम करता है यह हम सब लोगों के लिए प्रेरणादायक है मेरा दृढ़ विश्वास है कि मरीजों की इच्छा शक्ति और अपने पेशनेट टीबी वर्कर्स जो टीबी के मुक्त करने के लिए कार्यकर्ता काम कर रहे हैं उनके सहयोग से भारत के साथ ही दुनिया के हर देश अपने लक्ष्य को प्राप्त करने में समर्थ हो पाएंगे इस मिशन की तरह इसे पूरी मिशन की तरह लेना होगा और टी के जो टी फ्री गाँव टीबी मुक्त गांव साथ ही टीबी मुक्त पंचायत टीबी मुक्त शहर टीबी मुक्त गांव देहात टीबी मुक्त राज्य जिला ये सारे टीबी मुक्त बनाने का काम हमें 2025 के पहले करना है और इसलिए 2025 तक जो हमने ये संकल्प लिया है उसको पूरा करने के लिए हम आगे बढ़ रहे हैं आप जानते हैं भारत में टीकाकरण 
जो तीस पैंतीस सालों से चल रहा है लेकिन उस टीकाकरण में हमें काफ़ी 2014 तक समाप्त करना था लेकिन हम उस काम को उस समय तक नहीं कर पाए हमारे लोकप्रिय प्रधानमंत्री जब 2014 में उन्होंने कमान संभाला उन्होंने देशवासियों को आह्वान किया और स्वास्थ्य विभाग को कहा कि हमें एक मिशन के साथ इंद्रधनुष योजना को बल देते हुए और 2017 तक हम 90 प्रतिशत का लक्ष्य प्राप्त करेंगे वो लक्ष्य हमने प्राप्त करने का काम किया है इसमें कहीं दो मत नहीं जहाँ तक हमारा विश्वास है कि जो इम्यूनाइजेशन का कवरेज था वो पहले एक प्रतिशत के बढ़ से दर से बढ़ता था अब आज छः प्रतिशत के दर से बढ़ रहा है टीकाकरण का काम निश्चित रूप से अगर वैसे उसी एक परसेंट के हिसाब से चलता रहता तो 40 साल टीकाकरण में लगता लेकिन हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने एक दिशा को मोड़ने का काम किया और हम टीकाकरण में काफ़ी आगे बढ़ रहे हैं हम चाहते हैं कि टी जैसे बीमारी आप सबको मालूम होना चाहिए कि पूरी दुनिया से खत्म कैसे हो इसकी चिंता दुनिया भर के लोगों को है और टीबी जो क्यूरेबल डिजीज है प्रिवेंशन इज बेटर देन क्योर हम स्वस्थ हो सकते हैं जो टीबी के मरीज हैं उनके मन में जो ये भय है उस भय को भी निकालना पड़ेगा और हमें अवेयरनेस के लिए पीपुल्स अवेयरनेस एंड पीपुल्स पार्टिसिपेशन लोक जागरण और लोक सहभागिता को सुनिश्चित करते हुए हम टीबी उन्मूलन की दिशा में आगे बढ़ेंगे जहां तक सरकार ने टीबी मरीजों के आंकड़े के आधार से जोड़ने की आधार से जोड़ने की हमने योजना बनाई है और ताकि साल 2025 तक टीबी की पूरी तरह से उन्मूलन हो सके ऐसा करने से मरीजों को निश्चय घोषणा के तहत मिलने वाली जो आर्थिक मदद है उसमें भी आ, संभावना और बढ़ेगी और किसी प्रकार का लीकेज होने की काम संभावना नहीं रहेगी आप जानते हैं कि भारत सरकार ने पाँच सौ रुपया प्रत्येक टीबी मरीज को प्रत्येक माह में ये निश्चय योजना के तहत उनके डायरेक्ट बैंक में खाते में जाने का वो पैसा भेज रहे हैं दो हज़ार से ये राशि जा रही है देश भर में टी के इक्कीस लाख 21.5 लाख मरीजों की पहचान की जा चुकी है अनुमान है कि तीन दशमलव पाँच दशमलव पाँच लाख और भी टीबी के मरीज हैं जिन्हें जिनकी पहचान आवश्यक है और उसके लिए मरीजों की पहचान हो सके टी की दवा का नियमित रूप से उनको खिलाने की व्यवस्था हो बीच में छोड़ने के कारण उन्हें कई प्रकार का और भी गहन रोग का शिकार होना पड़ता है और इसलिए 2025 तक पूरी तरह टीबी मुक्त करने के लिए हमने जो योजना बनाई है जिन मरीजों की पहचान नहीं हो पाई है उनकी पहचान कर हम उन्हें दवा खिलाते खिलाने की बात करेंगे दवा देनी शुरू करने की बात हमने प्रारंभ कर दिया है और सरकार को लगता है कि टीबी के सभी मरीजों को आंकड़े के आधार पर उनसे आंकड़े उन जितने आंकड़े हैं उनको आधार से हम लिंक करेंगे ताकि मरीजों की पहचान कालांतर में आसान हो जाएगा आधार से मरीजों के आंकड़े जुड़ जाने से यह पता चल सकेगा कि उस आधार नंबर से कोई बैंक खाता जुड़ा है या नहीं यदि किसी मरीज के पास बैंक खाता नहीं है तो उसका खाता खुलवाने के लिए डाक विभाग के साथ भी हमने एमओयू किया है और अब एक बैंक खाते में एक ही मरीज को वित्तीय मदद मिल सकेगी तो जो हमारा अंत में मैं यही चाह कहूँगा कि हम लोगों ने टीबी उन्मूलन की दिशा में आगे काम किया है और जो हमारी पहचान आयुष्मान भारत का आयुष्मान भारत देश भर में पूरे 10 करोड़ लोगों के 50 करोड़ 10 करोड़ परिवार से 50 करोड़ लोगों के लिए प्रत्येक परिवार को 5 लाख रुपया स्वास्थ्य गारंटी की योजना देते हुए भारत सरकार का ये बहुत बड़ा प्रधानमंत्री जी का जो मोदी कैर के रूप में जाना जाता है ये हमने एक अनुष्ठान लिया है देश भर में लगभग बावन लाख लोगों ने इसका लाभ उठाया है लगभग 18,000 अस्पताल प्राइवेट और सरकारी अस्पताल जुड़े हैं मैं आप सब से आग्रह करना चाहूँगा कि इस आयुष्मान भारत को जो दुनिया भर के लोगों ने सराहाया है और साथ ही जो डेढ़ लाख हेल्थ सब सेंटर और प्राइमरी हेल्थ सेंटर हैं जिसको इलनेस हाल जो इलनेस हालत में हम उसको वेलनेस 
हेल्थ सेंटर के रूप में परिणत कर रहे हैं 2022 तक सब प्रकार की चिकित्सकीय सुविधा गांव देहात और उन वेलनेस सेंटर में उपलब्ध कराने का हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं जहां तक आज के इस सम्मेलन की बात है मैं इस सम्मेलन के प्रति हार्दिक शुभकामना पुनः अर्पित करते हुए आप सबको बधाई देना चाहता हूं बहुत बहुत शुभकामना हम होंगे कामयाब और आइए आज से इस टी उन्मूलन की दिशा में प्रधानमंत्री जी के जन आंदोलन में हम सभी शरीक हों हम सभी निश्चय करके यहाँ से जाएं कि निश्चित रूप से हम सफलता कायम करेंगे और 2025 तक टीबी उन्मूलन भारत बना करके रहेंगे हम होंगे कामयाब हम होंगे कामयाब हम होंगे कामयाब धन्यवाद जय हिंद वंदे मातरम नमस्कार थैंक यू Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Minister. Uh, and now, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to introduce uh, uh, the Honorable Governor of uh, Telangana, uh, Dr. Tamil Sai Sundaranjan, uh, to make her remarks. Good evening, everybody. Honorable Vice President of India and my mentor, Sri Venkaiah Naidu Ji, Honorable Minister of State for Health, Honorable Sri Ashwin Kumar Jaube Ji, Honorable Health Minister, Government of Telangana. Sri Etla Rajendra Garuji, President International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Union, Dr. Jermaya, Executive Director, International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Union, Mr. Jose Luis Castro, President Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sri M. Venkateshwaralu, and all the dignitaries of the dais and on the dais, members of media, ladies and gentlemen, very good, good evening. And all the participants, my salute to all the participants, because when I see from the dais, it appears to me the assembling of your lung specialist as a well-expanded, healthy lung with two lobes, with very healthy alveoli, because your faces are so bright, with good blood supply and with good oxygenation. And it appears you are committed to the wellness and healthiness of the lungs of this country and the international faculty, international citizens. I am standing here not as a governor, but as a doctor who is much concerned about the prevention of tuberculosis. And first of all, I laud our Honorable Prime Minister, who is committed and who cares about the wellness of the lungs to maintain a healthy lung not only as our Honorable Minister mentioned, not only he brought out the scheme of Aishman Bharat, but he thought about the wellness of each and every womanhood, mother, sister, who is cooking with the firewood and inhaling the smoke and he mentioned, when he, was, when he introduced the Ujwala scheme, when a mother, a poor mother, if she cooks the food for her family, much affectionately, in a firewood stove, inhaling the smoke, it is equivalent of inhaling more than 400 cigarettes and the harm effects on the lung. 
it is equivalent of inhaling four smoking 400 cigarettes so with a target of 8 crore families first he introduced the ujwala scheme that is free gas scheme so that the poor motherhood the poor mothers of india could inhale fresh air and avoid smoke while she was cooking for the while she is cooking for the family so why i mentioned this in the very beginning before talking about the disease before talking about the intensity of the disease and before talking about the spread of the disease taking care of the lungs as this is the union for maintaining healthy lungs taking care of the lung preventing the lung to get damaged by smoke and pollution that should be the primary target of any caring person and that is our honorable prime minister and i really feel honored to be here because as a doctor i have felt the cruelty of the tuberculosis as a medical student who got graduation from a peripheral hospital from a remote area tanjavur of tamil nadu each and every day we faced cases of tuberculosis now thank to our research thank to our innovations and development we are not seeing the cavities in lungs we are not seeing the cobweb when we do our csf draw our csf findings and we are not seeing the lymphadenopathy we are not seeing the continuously coughing and hemoptysis patients with hemoptysis but when we are not seeing patients with such symptoms but that still the challenge of tuberculosis is missing diagnosis i feel when we were students when we could see a patient we can very well predict this patient may be a tuberculous patient but now the diagnosis the challenge particularly as a doctor who was attached to a pediatric hospital the challenge of diagnosis in the pediatric group is really a challenge to us because in india approximately 3 lakh children are dropped from the school because of tuberculosis so quite a large number and uh, our health minister of telangana is here i should appreciate the state government because they have the telangana model of prevention of tuberculosis few years back they intensified the movement of anti tuberculosis by aligning all the registered practitioners approximately 30000 registered medical practitioners are there and they introduce some young doctor diagnostic schemes in the schools and because of that they could diagnose more cases but in spite of that the cases of tuberculosis i, can, I cannot say it is under much control so still it's a challenge most of the young doctors think that it is the disease of past my humble prayers are this should not be the disease of future it should be under good control and i believe this will not be a disease of future because so many star wars assembled here to safeguard the health of the lung of each and every patient so that will be really achieved by the conferences like this and the interactions good interactions and good researches carried out on tuberculosis
Our father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi ji said, that any plan is successful or unsuccessful depending upon its impact on the last needy person. So tuberculosis, as you all know, it is nutritionally supported. It should be nutritionally supported. Malnourishment versus tuberculosis. Tuberculosis versus malnourishment. So this again is a challenge in developing countries. And for that also our union government has brought out a nutritional month because a good nutrition is the answer for the challenge of tuberculosis and providing good nutrition and providing good health care and pollution free environment and smoke tobacco free society. Actually, we have to have all these in mind and I'm really honored to be here. And finally, I recollect the famous Mark Twain's funny comment. The only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want. Drink what you don't like and do what you would rather not. Let me conclude with my best wishes to you all and I thank all the attending this meaningful event. Thank you so much. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, I would now, it's my great honor and privilege to introduce our chief guest, Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Vinka Naidu, uh, to give his, his speech and also to officially open this conference. Thank you. Dr. Tamil Sai Sundar Rajan, Honorable Governor of Telangana, Sri Ashwini Kumar Chobe, Honorable Minister of State, Government of India, Sri Itala Rajendra, Honorable Health Minister of State of Telangana, Dr. Jeremia Chekaya Mohua, President International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Diseases, Professor Goy Marx, President-Elect, International Union Against Tuberculosis, Mr. Jos Luis Castro, Executive Director, Sri Venkateswarlu, President Telangana Chamber of Commerce, delegates who have come from different parts of the globe, and my dear brothers and sisters, Namaskar to all of you. I'm extremely happy to be admissed you today to inaugurate this important international conference that too being held in Hyderabad, the city of happening. I appreciate the International Union against tuberculosis and lung diseases for hosting this international conference of high significance in Hyderabad, as I said, a happening city, of course, modern medical infrastructure is expanding and turning this city into one of the major centers of medical tourism in India. The theme of the conference, Ending the Emergency, Science Leadership Action, quite aptly focuses on what is needed to ensure commitments become, an act, become action so that life-saving targets are met. According to the WHO, TB is one of the top 10 causes of death worldwide in 2018. It is also the leading killer of people with HIV and a major cause of deaths related to antimicrobial resistance. In 2018, as per the reports, there were an estimated 10, 9, 
to 11.1 million new TB cases worldwide, of which 1.1 million are children. India is among the eight countries that accounted for 66% of the new cases, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Pakistan, Nigeria, Bangladesh, and South Africa are among the other nations. In 2018, it is estimated that about 1.5 million people died on account of TB. However, TB treatment saved around 58 million lives globally between 2000 and 2018, and the TB mortality rate fell by 42% during that period. I'm happy to note that the government of India is in the forefront of global action to end the emergency on account of the prevalence of lung disease and tuberculosis. As you are all aware, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Bhai Modi has pledged a firm commitment to eradicate TB by the year 2025. It should be noted that India seeks to achieve the goal five years ahead of the globally agreed target. I am also pleased to note that the Government of India also launched TB Harega Desh Jitega campaign and is adopting a multi-sectoral and community-led approach to eliminate TB by 2025. I am told that the programs of the revised National TB Control Program have started yielding positive results and TB incidence in India has been coming down at an annual rate of 1.7%, although it's a matter of concern that around 5.5 lakh cases went unreported last year. Under the National Strategic Plan for Ending TB, this, is, this program is strengthening the private sector engagement to reach out to more TB patients. It is extremely important for the private sector involvement in notifying TB patients and improving treatment outcomes. I feel that the private sector must not only step up its efforts towards achieving the goal of eliminating TB, but must actively collaborate with the government in this regard. On its part, the government of India is making all efforts and also ably supported by various state governments, including Telangana, to ensure affordable health care for all and bring down the cost of TB diagnosis and treatment. I urge the private sector doctors who are making private practice and also the hospitals to, to focus on providing affordable treatment for the TB patients. I am told that an estimated 4.2 lakh people died from TB, which is more than HIV, AIDS and malaria combined last year. It is also understood that around 27 lakh people were afflicted with the TB and nearly 10 lakh patients of these did not receive a diagnosis or an adequate and proper treatment. Around 3 lakh children under the age of 15 years acquired TB through contact with infected family members. This should not be allowed to continue any longer. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has launched a nationwide prevalence survey to estimate prevalence of tuberculosis at national and sub-national level. The government has made some success during the last uh, one year in case finding, drug resistance surveys, and in providing nutritional support to TB patients. My dear sisters and brothers, there is a need to address various causes that spread TB, including poverty, overcrowding, Prevention is the most effective way to control the spread of TB and more efforts are needed in that direction. Lifestyle disorders such as diabetic also increase the risk of TB. There is every need by the society and individuals to focus their attention on the lifestyles. We must get back to the old way of lifestyles where we have some physical activity and where we used to live with the nature, and now again we must go back to love and live with the nature. Because nature, culture, together for a better future. That is the way forward. <laughs> if you disregard the nature, nature will disregard you. And it is already showing its fury. You are seeing the effects of climate change. 
air pollution, water pollution. Today morning, I was in Nagpur, Maharashtra to attend an international conference on air pollution and also the other pollutions that are affecting the community across the globe. It is very important to see that all of us individuals, this should not be left to government alone because over the years people developed an attitude, everything will be done by the government, subcom, sarkar karega, am bekar baito chelega, aisa nahi chelega. You have to join this moment and you being there in the forefront, it will lead mass education of the people that they should take care of their health. Because as I told you, the lifestyle is making an impact on the life of the people. And secondly also the food habits. The food habits also are primarily responsible for some of the diseases. And the other habits like chewing tobacco, smoking tobacco, Dr. Sondar Rajan being a doctor, she was explaining it. I'm not that much familiar with the uh, medicine. But one thing, earlier you used, to, you used to recognize easily who is a tuberculosis patient. But now, these diseases are hidden like other maladies in the society. So we have to really conduct survey and the society also must take interest in identifying such cases and then reporting to the authorities at the earliest. And the good food habits, good lifestyle will assure you good health and good life. I'm told the effect of BCG vaccine that is currently being administered for TB does not last for many years. There is an absolute need for a booster vaccine or a new vaccine that is effective and long lasting. I'm happy to note that the Indian government have initiated trials for testing new candidate vaccines. I'm told that majority of people who are infected have innate immunity. Perhaps in-depth studies could take up to find out what protects them so that the similar deficiencies could be addressed in people who are vulnerable, improved diagnostics are also needed for detecting TB in organs other than lungs. Another major concern for all the stakeholders in the healthcare sector is the growing incidence of respiratory, respiratory and lung-related diseases due to air pollution. According to the WHO organization, ambient outdoor air pollution is a major cause of death and disease globally. An estimated 4.2 million premature deaths globally are linked to ambient air pollution, mainly from heart diseases, stroke, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, and acute respiratory infections in children. In children and adults, both short and long-term exposure to ambient air pollution can lead to reduced lung function, respiratory functions, and aggravated asthma. I'm sure that all the specialists who have assembled here from across the globe, I'm very happy to know from your president that more than 130 countries are present in this international conference. Conference of this nature will enable us to know better the best practices in various parts of the globe. We try to know from each other's experience and then try to improve upon the system. The, in children and adults, both short-term and long-term exposure, air pollution, as I told you, can lead to lung function, respiratory infection. I'm sure that all the specialists and experts who gathered here will discuss ways to combat this major global health problem. I must also compliment the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease for providing technical assistance to the revised National TB Control Program and the NSP. I would also like to appreciate it for bringing together key stakeholders from health, government, the private sector, civil society, and the media for promoting the campaign Call to Action for TB-Free India. This is the need of the hour. All should join together. The media also plays an important role. I urge upon the medical practitioners to 
communicate to the people the need for preventive measures, educate the people, and media, as I said, both electronic as well as print, plays an important role in communicating the views about uh, these diseases by the experts so that the ordinary people can get themselves alerted and take care. Dear sisters and brothers, India has achieved considerable progress on various health indicators with successive governments according to high priority to health and well-being of the people. The average life expectancy has increased to 69 years and many infectious diseases have also been successfully eliminated. We are in Hyderabad. This is a manufacturing center for pharmaceutical and many of the vaccines were also found and originated from this place of Hyderabad. But the spread of non-communicable diseases, rising health care costs, lack of adequate medical facilities in rural area, and other factors such as pollution are posing new and formidable challenges. According to data released by WHO in 2017, about 61% of the deaths in India are attributed to non-communicable diseases, including heart disorders, cancers, and diabetics. There is a need to establish non-communicable disease clinics in both urban and rural areas, and the private sector must play a prominent role in setting up such clinics. Another area of concern that needs to be addressed to the shortage of qualified doctors and trained paramedical personnel in the country. It has been estimated that India was facing a shortage of 6 lakh doctors and 2 million nurses. I am happy that the government of India the Prime Minister has taken initiative to see that a medical college is established in every district headquarters of the country to address the long felt needs. There is also every need to train more and more nurses who can take care of the persons who are affected. And for that, you need more and more institutions to come up even private sector also. The difference between the public sector and private sector is slowly getting erased. The best way is public-private partnership. That could be the model to bridge the gap in providing technically advanced primary and secondary health care centers, making available advanced treatment at an affordable cost to all sections is another aspect that needs to be attended by all the stakeholders in the health sector. It should be a matter of concern that each year several people are getting pushed to the vicious circle of debts due to out-of-pocket expense and high treatment costs. With the non-communicable diseases like cancer, diabetic and heart attack accounting to huge spending by households, this problem can be sur surmounted to a large extent by ensuring universal health coverage where every individual gets quality treatment without facing any financial hardship. This is also essential to achieve sustainable development goals. I am glad that the Union Government has launched Ayushman Bharat to provide comprehensive insurance coverage to 10 crore poor and vulnerable families. Telangana is a dynamic and growing hub for innovative medical science and biomedical industry. I call upon the business leaders to play a more proactive role in supporting research and development in treatment, care and prevention of TB. I must also compliment the Hyderabad City Police and the Telangana government for launching smoke-free Hyderabad campaign in the run-up to this conference. I hope that this conference will provide continuing momentum in the drive to eliminate TB, both in India and worldwide. This is a global emergency, and we must all work together and learn from each other to achieve our ambitious goals to end the scourge of TB and lung disease. I also would like to compliment Sri Venkateswaru, President Telangana Chamber of Commerce, and his team for joining together with this effort of the international community and also governments of India and the states. My dear friends, before I conclude, I would like to stress again that we must educate the society about the need to go back to the original lifestyle. Doing exercise, protecting nature, and also taking care of your own body. The programs that have been given by the Prime Minister from time to time, many of the programs, 
they are social in nature whether it is swachh bharat swachh bharat is the noblest campaign that is very primarily important and also the other programs fitness india they are all intended for the welfare of the people even yoga yoga also will take care of your mind and body yoga is an ancient art i am happy it is now catching the attention of the international community and the honorable prime minister narendra bhai modi has taken lead to make the united nations to approve the same and yoga should be practiced by one and all i was very happy recently i have been to costa rica and many countries costa rica president who is young he he issued a decree suggesting to the people to have yoga country after country is following it india which is huge population they must also sincerely take up this campaign of yoga and then every person in the society must participate it for your own betterment it should not be seen as a government program or modi program yoga is for your body not for modi you have to understand this and also participate in this program and the second point as i was suggesting is about the need for food habits indian food traditional food and food world over that has been prescribed according to the seasons according to the reasons according to the climate according to the requirement of that region and all so we here in india we must get back to our own food habits should not be carried away by this pizza burger carried by the propaganda and branding and all they are alien to our bodies they will not suit you also and another thing the weakness that has kept in the society overall even worldwide is about uh, the crazy for instant food instant food means constant disease this has to be understood by one and all why we very one the cooked food cook, cooked food is healthy that also has to be taken care and all of us should be worried about our future our generations future the youngsters and see to it that they all follow healthy habits the doctors community the medical profession is a noble profession the medical profession is called as a mission it is not for simply commission and nobody should do any omission or give any remission to the mission and we should take it up as our own mission and see to it that we society, we serve the society better i wish you all the best for this conference thank you very much namaskar jai hind Honorable Vice President, uh, Honorable Minister of State of Health, ladies and gentlemen, we are so grateful that you have honored us with your presence here today and for your powerful words of support and encouragement. When we decided to hold the Union World Conference in Hyderabad in two, back in 2017, the scale of the Indian government's ambition and commitment was only just apparent. The National, Strategy Plan, the National Strategic Plan to NTB 2017-2025 set out bold and unprecedented vision backed by detailed implementation plans with full political, administrative, and financial commitment involving all ministries and departments in 36 union territory governments and engaging with private non-profit and community sectors. The progress you have achieved already is impressive and sets the pace for other countries to follow. As our president said, we at the Union are proud to be partnering with you in this noble enterprise. We are deeply honored by your support for this conference, for the first to be held in India since 1957 so in some ways, this conference is long overdue, but I believe it is perfect timing as India is now leading the way 
on TV and long health. I must also pay tribute to our hosts and partners here in Hyderabad, without whom this conference will not be possible. Above all, I'll, we give a special thanks to the, Mr. Benkateshurlu, the president of the Telangana Chambers of Commerce and Industry, to Mr. Gary Khan and the Hyderabad Convention Visitors Bureau, and to all the staff here at the Convention Center who have worked so hard to make this conference a success. I am confident that this will lay the foundations for a strong and lasting partnership. Now, as a token of respect to our uh, honorable guests, we would like to present the traditional gifts. Honorable guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please stand for the national anthem of the Republic of India. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. We will shortly continue with the opening ceremony.
Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated for the opening ceremony. Thank you. Sufi 
May I allow me to welcome you to the second half of our ceremony. As the union prepares uh, to celebrate its centenary, we find ourselves at a turning point in the fight against tuberculosis and lung disease. We are working on new ways to prevent TB in children. We are looking at new ways uh, to reduce deaths by providing entire households with medical care all at once. And we are looking at new ways to treat uh, people with drug-resistant TB. Yesterday, as uh, many of you will know, the results of a phase 2B uh, trial of a very promising um, vaccine were announced. And we look forward in this conference to more exciting announcements over the next few days. At the same time, we note that there are emerging challenges that are forcing us to be a little more creative and a little more innovative uh, than we have ever been before. We are facing a major threat by the tobacco industry. We are facing major challenges with air pollution. And of course, we are facing massive challenges with climate change, as uh, was mentioned uh, this, uh, um, uh, earlier by uh, the Vice President. As we look to the future, therefore, we see uh, opportunities to achieve new breakthroughs that were not possible in the past. And it is uh, all of us, really all of us in this hall, who can make that difference. Together, we have the expertise and the will to end the tuberculosis emergency. But we also need to reach out as you all know, and engage beyond our traditional communities. This is not a war that is going to be won by doctors alone. It's not a war that is going to be won by nurses alone, but it is a war that needs to involve everybody. We need activists, and we need actors who can communicate with a much wider audience and mobilize support than what the medical fraternity is able to do. It is therefore now my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Claire Folani. Claire, as many of you in the room will know, is a well-known film and TV actress who has appeared in more than 50 films and TV series. She was inspired by hearing about our cause to freely give her support to the work of the union. And please join me in giving her a warm welcome, uh, Claire Polani. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I feel honored and I feel humbled and also grateful to be here with all of you tonight. I've been so impressed with what I've been learning, and I've been learning a lot. So several months ago, when I joined the union as an ambassador, I'll be honest, my knowledge of TB was pretty limited. My best friend growing up, he'd lost a lung to TB, but he went on to become an amateur rugby player. And I was unaware that it had returned to become the world's biggest infectious killing disease. And that today, of course, it dispro disproportionately affects the poorest and the most disadvantaged communities. In this new role as ambassador of the union, I have been asking many questions to better understand what the current state of the TB epidemic is, the support wanted, the solutions required to make the changes needed to stop the unnecessary suffering. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, by being a passionate advocate who works in the entertainment field that I can do my small part 
to contribute to help them make the changes needed. Yesterday, we were accompanied by a group of journalists to a slum in the old town of Hyderabad, where I was fortunate enough to meet with an extraordinary group of people working to help their own communities overcome TB in their neighborhoods. They were on the front line in the fight against TB stigma. One of the biggest challenges we face confronting TB globally. I was moved. Actually, that's an understatement. I was, um, I was blown away at the commitment, professionalism shown by the outreach workers and the community volunteers. And I have nothing, nothing but admiration for the courage shown by the TV survivors that I've met. You are so brave and your voice is so important. We need you. We need your voice and we need your face. It is crazy that in the high-risk area where TB cases are being detected, diagnosed and treated, that we are not simultaneously preventing the disease in those people that come in close contact with the patients with TB. Everybody's been saying that tonight and we're saying it in repetition because obviously we need it to change. Meeting survivors yesterday, telling me their stories. Some of them are here today. They've reintroduced themselves. <laughs> um, what they've been through, their experiences of having TB and recovering from it, showed me how important their voices are and that they must have a platform to be heard on the global level. Yeah. So I'm repeating what many of you here today have heard before, and that, but we still need to address TB in children. Child TB is a silent epidemic, one that impacts children mostly too young, obviously, to advocate for themselves. So this, despite the fact that the WHO strongly recommends TB preventative therapy to children under the age of five, yet, According to the WHO, only 23% of an estimated 1.3 million children under the age of five who had a household member with TB got the preventative therapy needed. And this again is being repeated, but that's why we're here, so I will. The recently released WHO 2019 Global TB report says that more than one million children under the age of 15 became sick with TB in 2018. Of those, nearly one in four died. These precious lives were lost for no reason TB is completely curable with children. It is completely curable with children with TB if they receive standard treatment. So why, over the last four years, did we let one million children die completely needlessly? Why were 90% of those children left completely untreated? Why weren't they even diagnosed? These are the questions, and I expect that almost everyone in this room knows the answers, and everyone is working hard to tackle these issues and find solutions, because you are the good guys. And the simple fact is that the health systems neglect children with TB because children are less contagious than adults, and because the standard tools used to diagnose TB work less well in children. This massive toll of deaths among children is a huge violation of human rights. And forgive me if it sounds naive, but it seems to me we need to keep shouting from the rooftops about this terrible waste of lives 
and tragedy for families because most people out there, and I was one, just don't know enough to care. So, ending child TB epidemic requires local interventions using simple tools for active screening and diagnosis. Union-led projects like Detect Child TB in Uganda and TT in Francophone Africa, they're just demonstrating that medical professionals can be equipped with knowledge and tools to diagnose, treat, and prevent TB in children. Yes, we need to push to ensure that screening households where an adult is diagnosed with TB to see if children have been exposed in the home must become the standard implemented everywhere. And I hope, I hope that having people like me to help shout it out a little louder will get more people to pay attention so that we can communicate more creatively, mobilize wider communities, and mobilize a movement that goes beyond the thousands gathered here. As brilliant as you all are, I believe that we need to galvanize the survivors, as well as the youth of today, to get behind this as TB is part of their future, along with the environment. It is the same world that they will have to live in and ultimately raise their families in. The good news, as many have said this evening, is that yesterday we did hear that there was some very promising progress on the vaccine that realistically is still some way away. But we have the, dr the drugs available now to prevent TB in kids. But to get it to them, we need political will. And thankfully, some of the esteemed politicians here this evening said that they were committed to do that. Let's hold them to it. I really do feel privileged to now be a part of your community to be a part of the union and meeting this incredible group that is fighting this Herculean fight to end TB. And they are helping to lead the way to have these brave TB survivors, some of whom I've had the honor to meet yesterday, as the first ever Survivors Summit. It's about time. What a group of champions you are. And it is now my honor to introduce one of these emerging champions, a TV survivor, a journalist, truth teller, and artist, well known to you and here to represent civil society, but bringing her own unique perspective and voice, Nadita Venkatisen. Thank you. Kavin 
ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पदपाल शृण्वन्नूतिसीधसाधन Thank you everyone. 
my name is nandita venkateshan and this dance known as the shiva rudram a rendition to the god of the destroyer of evil is dedicated to the exemplary courage and strength shown by every tb survivor sitting here in the audience and to the million others around globally i have survived tb twice in my life at the ages of 17 and 23 my second battle robbed me of my hearing completely but it did not take away my love for dance despite no longer being able to follow any form of music yes this included this performance as well <laughs> or my passion for helping others in their own struggles with the disease yesterday i attended the first ever survivor summit and i would now like to present a statement written by all those who attended the summit we survivors of tb and other lung diseases here on the 29th october 2019 at the first ever survivor summit in hyderabad india call on all attendees of the 50th union world conference on lung health and around the world to hereby commit that from now on you will do nothing about us without us we have walked the difficult path of these diseases mind you and we have survived our voices our experiences and our stories count we are to be heard and we are to be listened to and acted upon you say you know the signs of our diseases we say we know the pain of living with them you say that diagnosis diagnostics are hard and expensive to provide we say that late diagnosis destroyed our health and lives you say that developing new drugs is expensive but we say that it is more expensive to lose our hearing to lose our sight and lose our livelihoods you say that it's difficult to increase funding for research and development we say that without more government investment and support our brothers and sisters will continue to die we do not need you to watch us take our treatment we need holistic integrated people centered assistance and care none of us would be here today without you your work revolves around diseases that we know more intimately than we ever hope you will ever have to know but where are we at your tables on your panels and in your publications we all come here with the same goals finding cures finding answers finding ways of improving lives of those stricken with these diseases we are not cases and we are not burdens and we are more than just patients we are people we have a right to life we have a right to dignity we have a right to information education and work we have a right to health and to benefit from scientific progress we have a right to know our rights and to exercise them freely especially in our healthcare system 
you know many of us did not choose this as some sort of a career path it was chosen for us when we fell ill and it has now become a life's work often without any compensation for our time respect us pay us work with us see us for what we are experts in our field we cannot do this without you and you cannot do this without us i would now like to invite on stage a person from who's been involved in this moment closely to introduce you to someone who has played a young girl who has played a very important role in the drtb treatment in india i would like to call on stage ms leena menghani and we will play tribute to a very special young girl here who has played an exemplary role in improving the treatment for drtb in india azadi 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 so yeah actually is shaking when i am i'm reading this out um we speak not just for those who survive for those who did not survive tb and drtb all of us here gathered today at this global conference in india to discuss the science and the medical aspects of tb but we often forget that this disease is not just about science and public health but also about the right of those living dying and affected by tb and drtb not once did we hear the word rights in this in the in the plenary one of us who did not survive is shreya shreya who didn't live to see her 20th birthday she belongs with malala and she belongs with greta in the pantheon of teenagers who stood for the principles of equality and justice of the 2.7 million indians with tuberculosis she was one of the 130000 who was affected by drug resistant tuberculosis uh, the disease that affects a lot of people in india suffering repeated misdiagnosis an apathetic healthcare system that failed her at every stage of her diagnosis and treatment she along with her father traveled repeatedly by train to mumbai and delhi looking and seeking treatment for xrr tb that she lived with since 2012 
when she finally received her diagnosis of XDR-TB in 2015, she was refused treatment with the new TB drugs that could save her life. Her decision to go to court to be able to access new TB drugs from the TB program finally provided a face and voice to the thousands who struggled across the country for the drug DRTB diagnosis and the right to treatment. Even if it's too late, she said, she told the Guardian, at least those patients who will benefit from it, other patients will benefit from it. Her actions changed the Indian TB program forever, forcing it to acknowledge reality and announce the scale up and access to Bedakulin across the country and pushing us as civil society to pressurize Otsuka, the pharmaceutical giant, to register Delaminid in India. The new drugs cured her, but she died of overwhelming pulmonary failure, so they came too late. The delays in getting the right diagnosis and therapy were deadly, but she gave life to thousands of DRTB patients who came after her, who were able to access Bedakulin or Delaminid from the TB program. We must remember her spirit and continue to fight for the access to diagnostics and more effective TB drugs for people with DRTB. She passed away on 8th of October 2018. Please stand to observe a two minute silence so that we can remember Shreya and thousands of others who lost their lives to TB and DRTB today. Thank you very much. You know, Mumbai is known as ground zero for DRTV. And there are a lot of people from Bombay today who overcome many barriers to get to this TB conference. So if there's anybody from Mumbai who wants to say something, please. Thank you, Lena. Uh, my name is Ganesh Achare. I'm a TV activist. So I was 17 years old boy, twice I had a TB. Then I decided nobody can get TB in like me. So Mumbai, where I live, this is a global hub of the drug resistant TB. And we don't understand the strengths of resistant pattern. Mumbai, everywhere, million people are coming. But where is a drug? Where is a medicine? We don't have medicine to treat people. I humble request to everyone and house Sreya open the door for the people. You all have to push, push, push for the access to treatment. Mumbai, we don't have medicine, Bedaculin, Delamini together. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, मेरा नाम मीरा यादव है और मैं एक्स डी आर टी सर्वाइवर हूँ मुंबई से आ, मेरा ये कहना है कि जो मैंने स्ट्रगल किया जो मैंने सर्वाइव किया वो अभी के मरीज़ ना करे आज मुझसे मेरा बेटा दूर है लेकिन ऐसा किसी के साथ ना हो मैंने पूरे छः साल मेरे टीबी के इसमें वेस्ट हो गए कभी सोचा नहीं था कि लाइफ के इतने सारे साल टी डिसीज़ में वेस्ट हो जाएंगे आज मुझसे मेरी फैमिली दूर है मेरा बेटा मुझसे दूर है जस्ट क्योंकि मुझे टीबी हुआ था इसलिए तो टीबी ये हमारे हकों की लड़ाई है जो दो दवाइयां हैं नई इससे मैं ठीक हुई हूँ मैं इसी से मेरी जान बची है और मैं चाहती हूँ कि ये दोनों दवाइयां कॉम्बिनेशन में 
सबको मिले हर जरूरतमंद को मिले जिसे ये दो दवा की जरूरत है ताकि वो बच सके क्योंकि इस देश का जो मरीज है जो भी मरीज है टीबी के वही इस देश का भविष्य है तो मैं ये चाहूँगी कि ये दो दवाइयाँ एक्सटेंशन में सबको मिले एंड ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट ना कि सिर्फ सिक्स मंथ के लिए ही ताकि सबकी जाने बच सके थैंक यू दर्दनाक इंजेक्शन से दवाइयों की पेटेंट से दवाइयों की महंगाई से हमें चाहिए टीवी से हमें चाहिए टीवी से हमें चाहिए टीवी से आजादी आजादी दर्दनाक इंजेक्शन से दर्दनाक इंजेक्शन से हमें चाहिए टीबी से दर्दनाक इंजेक्शन से दवाइयों की स्टक आउट से मेडिसिन के स्टक आउट से मेडिसिन के स्टक आउट से हमें चाहिए आजादी 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 हमें चाहिए दर्दनाक इंजेक्शन से हमें चाहिए टीबी से Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, just for the international audience here, Azadi means freedom, and all the slogans that were spoken here talk about different types of freedom that one wants within the domain of TB. Be it uh, painful injections. So one slogan meant uh, uh, freedom from painful injections, uh, freedom from longer regimens, uh, freedom from. Yeah, so uh, freedom from TB itself, that is what, uh, freedom from high prices. Your Excellency Prime Minister Narendra Modi, my friend Jose Dear colleagues and friends, we have a lot of work to do. Your Excellency Prime Minister Narendra Modi, my friend. Your Excellency Prime Minister Narendra Modi, my friend Jose Luis Castro, Executive Director of the Union, dear colleagues and friends, we have a lot of work to do. The impact of Lyme disease is as large today as it was during the 19th century. Lyme disease causes about one sixth of all deaths globally. Tuberculosis is the world's deadliest infectious killer currently affecting about 10 million people around the world. But we're also making progress. The number of people dying from TB has declined 11% during the past three years. Tobacco smoking among adults has declined 3% during the past six years. These successes for lung health would not have been possible without our collaboration with the union. The theme of your conference is ending the emergency for the 8 million people dying from lung disease each year in low and lower middle income countries. This is essential to our mission of health for all. We're seeing leadership from India, which has a goal to end TB by 2025, five years ahead of the global target. Thank you so much, Prime Minister Modi, for your leadership. WHO 
is encouraging all countries to implement integrated TB and tobacco programs. This conference has a crucial role to play in highlighting these results. I wish you a fruitful conference and I thank you. Namaste. Hey. I'd like to thank most sincerely uh, those who have uh, uh, come to express their deepest feelings about living uh, with the disease uh, going through the pain of being treated for TB and suffering the consequences of being cured for TB but having lifelong problems. I think uh, uh, the TB community globally stands with you and supports you uh, uh, in the efforts to make uh, TB services freely available to you uh, and, 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 and uh, all the support that needs to be provided to families around the world that uh, suffer uh, TB. We are honored to have received uh, the message uh, from Dr. Tedros and uh, before I welcome our keynote speaker, also from the World Health Organization, I would like to thank uh, Nadita for uh, those uh, uh, expressive words and dance and also thank uh, the civil society colleagues for the passionate uh, interventions uh, that uh, have made uh, a significant point and uh, I think all of us in this hall have heard you. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker who I'm sure is well known to uh, many of us uh, and uh, Ren, you will forgive me if I do not pronounce your name uh, correctly because I was born in a Kenyan village and uh, they did not teach me how to pronounce names of people around the world. Uh, so please forgive me. But I want to believe that your name is Ren Mingui, who is uh, an assistant director, uh, general universal health coverage, communicable and uncommunicable diseases. Uh, Dr. Rain has led on communicable diseases at WHO since 2016. He was previously Director General for International Cooperation in the National Health and Family Planning Commission of the People's Republic of China and has a distinguished 30-year career focused on health policy and health reform. Please uh, welcome Ren Mingui to give us the keynote address. Thank you, Presidents. Dear colleagues, distinguished delegates, friends, ladies and gentlemen, especially our senior representative from community of TB. We stand at a crossroad. Two months ago, when the political declarations on universal health coverage was endorsed at the United Nations General Assembly in New York City, it was the first time that the world leaders has unified around the common vision of the world in which all the people can access the health services they need without suffering financial hardness. That political declaration represents the historical landmark in global health following the commitment made at the first ever United Nations high-level meeting on TB and the third high-level meeting on non-community diseases of the uh, United Nations in 2018. Now we have the highest political commitments to reach universal health coverage for all, to eliminate tuberculosis, to reduce the deaths and the illness from air pollution, 
to reduce premature deaths from non-communicable diseases by one third by the year of 2030. If, if all these commitments are not translated into real concrete action in the coming three years, we risk losing the gain we have made. The fact that the most the lung diseases are preventable should give us reason for optimism. It requires strong political wills, switch action, and endurance. WHO is absolutely optimistic. And we can, and we must do better. We are optimistic because we have everything we need to take concrete action in the country and in the community. Let me start with tuberculosis. One of the top diseases that impact lung health and top infection killers in the world. Each day, each day, nearly 4,000 people lost their life to TB. By the time I made my speech, over 15 people would lost life to TB. The World Health Organization just released our global TB report two weeks ago. That reviews the countries are absolutely making fundamental, significant progress. About 7 million people were reported to have been reached with quality TB care in 2018, up from 6.4 million in 2018. 17. India is the lead way, is one of the biggest contributors to this success. Along with coordinated efforts across the countries, supported by Fund and Treat All NTB initiative of WHO, Stop TB Partnership, and Global Fund to Fight ASTB and Malaria, as well as through the great strengthened contributions with civil society and partners, such as union, and uh, you know, United and other partners. Further, TB related to deaths dropped from 1.6 million in 2017 to 1.5 million in 2018. Seven high TB burden countries and one regions are on the track to reach a 2020 milestone of ending TB strategy. Let me name the seven countries because they deserve the appreciation and fully recognized. They are Kenya, Lesotho, Myanmar, Russia, South Africa, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. I wish the list could long than just seven countries on the track. However, however much remains to be done, around three million people with TB don't have access to quality care in 2018. This is even more accurate for the people with drug-resistant TB. Only, with only one in three access treatment for the drug-resistant TB. Prevention efforts are spending, but we need to see that effort should be intensified. The funding gaps of close to 5 billion US dollars impede our progress, unfortunately, in overall TB response and for research. The TB epidemic is influenced by key determiners across various sectors and risk factors, for instance, tobacco use. WHO has been intensifying our efforts to support the countries in accelerating TB response with multi-sectoral and integrated people-centered approach, including through the rollout of the new guidelines of TB, uh, drug-resist TB, that would lead to better treatment outcomes, as well as on TB prevention. WHO also released as implementing the multi-sectoral multi accountability framework 
for TB to drive sustained action across all the sectors in the country. Let me turn to another emergency. Claims lives, and also a spot line for this conference. That's tobacco. Tobacco remains the leading preventive cause of deaths. The world still have more than one billion smokers and more than 350 million smokeless tobacco users. Close to one million of people who feel ill with tuberculosis every year may be attributed to smoking. Controlling tobacco epidemic can therefore be major contributors towards the ending TB epidemic. The good news is the tide is turning. Tobacco smoking among adults has declined 3% during the past six years. 3%, not enough, unfortunately. In June of, in July of this year, we launched WHO report on global tobacco epidemic, which shows that tobacco use has declined in most of countries during the past decade. More than 60% of countries, more than 60% of populations in the world is now covered at least by one WHO 6 Empower strategy for tobacco. Four times more than the, the numbers in 2017. In recent years, several countries, including India, have introduced large graphic health warnings on tobacco products. This success will not be possible without the partner's support, including the union. Let me turn to my third point, that is COPD. This means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is a progress life straining lung disease that cause breathlessness and produces people to serious illness. The primary cause of COPD are smoking and air pollution. We have overwhelming evidence about how harm the air pollution does to the health. The WHO is taking the battles against, with all the partners, against air pollution because it's devastating health impact, like its fight. We need all the countries and the cities to commit to meet WHO's standards for air pollution quality, for air quality in the next 10 years. In response to many problems and challenges issues, we need to have resilience and strong health systems to respond. So that's why I need to highlight my last but not least point, that is universal health coverage. Unless we change the course, up to 5 billion people will still lack access to essential health services in 2030. Even when these services are available, using them can spell financial disaster. The lack of access to affordable, quality care is also the break on the economy growth. Universal health coverage is therefore not just the moral imperative, it's also economic imperative. Now it's time for us to act. Just like the theme of this World Union Conference, as ending the emergency to end the suffering caused by lung disease, we all need to step up our efforts in emergency mode. If we are really serious, about the targets we have set together, together with all the member states, we have to improve our life within one generation. So I would like to thank the union to support and commitment. This conference is bringing all together stakeholders to call on the world to fulfill the political commitments made yesterday by taking concrete actions today to improve the lives of people tomorrow. Together, 
we can overcome the barriers we are facing to ensure that all the people enjoy the highest sustainable standards of health and well-being. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Ren, for your passion, your optimism, but also your call to sustained action. Good evening, honored guests and delegates, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Karen Middlecoop, and I am honored to address you this evening as the chair of the Coordinating Committee of Scientific Activities. This committee, who you can see behind me, comprises representatives of all of the union's sections and subsections, from the representatives from the institutes and from civil society. This group of dedicated individuals have spent the last year developing a stimulating and balanced scientific program for this conference, with some outstanding science across a range of themes and disciplines. Prevention, generally, is a strong focus this year, with topics ranging, as you've heard, from exciting vaccine trial results to latent TB treatment options, improvements in fields, especially for high-risk groups, including pediatrics, and also the role of secondary preventative therapy in TB survivors. In TB diagnostics, we'll be discussing biomarkers, which remain an important area of interest, and diagnostic approaches to extrapulmonary TB on the agenda. Strategies for finding the missing millions is an important topic while improving access to TB care is a central theme that resonates throughout the program. Treatment for drug-resistant TB, as you've heard, remains critical. Among the many sessions on this at the conference, I would advise you don't miss the late lunchtime discussion panel tomorrow on the role and implementation of individualized drug-resistant TB treatment regimens. Lung health other than TB is receiving a lot of attention this year, as it should. And I strongly recommend the special session on childhood asthma and pneumonia that is running on Saturday. As is appropriate, there will also be much discussion on the issues of tobacco over the next few days, including a session in partnership with the WHO on the regulation of novel and emerging nicotine and tobacco products. With so much happening, I would recommend that you download the conference app, which is updated daily, so that you, you can navigate the program and get the most out of the exciting conference lineup. You have seen the presence of civil society and advocacy at the conference already, and I really would encourage you all to visit Community Connect, Spurthy Vedica, which means inspiration spaces in Telugu. This venue is located just outside the main conference, on the right as you exit this conference center, and it is open free of charge to the public. Spurthy Vedika is a vibrant and colorful area where community activists, scientists, students, civil society, and all others can come together to network, exchange ideas, and to inspire and drive action towards our common goal of ending the TB emergency. And lastly, for the first time this year, this conference has a tobacco control pledge. I invite you all to join us in, the action and in action to fight against tobacco. Please sign the pledge, which you can find on the app or conference website, and commit to being a tobacco-free role model. And now it is my pleasure to introduce some of our valued partners in the efforts to combat TB. Every year at the Union Conference, we and our member organizations award a number of prizes. One of the most prestigious of these awards is the Cochin Prize, which recognizes those making a significant contribution to the fight against tuberculosis. It is awarded annually by the Stop TB Partnership and the Cochin Foundation based in the Republic of Korea. Joining us today to present the Cochin Prize for 2019 I'm delighted to welcome up on stage Dr. Duyon Kim, Chairman of the Cochin Foundation, and Dr. Luchika Ditu, Executive Director of the Stop TB Partnership.
Yeah, we were there. Oh boy, you are committed. This is the most amazing group that remained in the room, even though all celebrities left. But we have, I appreciate Claire, you staying with us. Thank you, that shows you are really committed. As well as Ren, I am one of the alveolas from the room that I came here. And before I start uh, on the cochon, I want to say that um, we have a... Uh... Oh, I don't know how to go back. I hope it's this, okay. So every year we announce at the union the theme of the World TB Day for the coming year. Uh, because we have Claire here and she might not know, but for those of you that you don't know, I hope there is nobody in the room that doesn't know that on 24 March, we celebrate the World TB Day so on 24 March 2020, we have again the celebration of the World TB Day. We continue with the theme of this year, which is It's Time. It's a good theme uh, because it's uh, generous, it's easy to be translated, it's easy to uh, adapt it to everything and anything you want to make the case. And I really count on the help of everybody to make sure that uh, you know, we, we become not only viral, but bacteriological, which we already are now, but it, we make sure that we are reaching uh, uh, all the audience that we need. So um, moving on from, so this is the World TB Day theme 2020, so you can still use a lot of the things that you did uh, last year, but refresh, because the, uh, the theme of this year of the Cochon Prize was related to the human rights. And I want to say that it's time for the human rights in TB. So I hope that a lot of the it's time next year will focus on the human rights for tuberculosis and on the rights of all the people that were presented here and on the rights of those that were especially not presented here. Every year, uh, we are lucky enough to have the Cochon Foundation providing this prize. And I would like to have uh, Chairman Kim saying a few words on behalf of the Cochon Foundation. Thank you, Roshika. And good evening, distinguished guests. It's time for human rights in TV. On behalf of the Cochon Foundation, it's my honor to be with you at the 50th Union World Conference on Lung Health in India. I would like to thank the Union for providing in the privilege of sharing this stage tonight and commend each of you in this auditorium for your dedication and efforts to fight and end TV. A cause that the founder of our organization, the late German, Jong Gun Lee, was deeply committed to. As chairman of the Cochin Foundation, I'm proud of the long-standing collaboration we have with the Stop TV Partnership. Together with the Stop TV Partnership, we established the Cochin Prize in 2005. We did so out of a deep and joint sense of responsibility to the, our respective platforms and resources to acknowledge achievement in the TB response. The response from the global TBC community has been both inspiring and humbling since 2005, we have been able to celebrate 23 uh, winners and the different aspects of achievements. This year, and in alignment with the UN political declaration on TB and the mandate of the Stop TB Partnership to advance a community rights and gender, 
approach to reach and see, serve every person, centrality of human rights in the TV response. And especially those of you are transforming the response to be equitable, rights based on people centered. Hence, the theme is time for human rights in TV. Before I hand over to my dear friend and colleagues, Dr. Luchika Dittiu will announce the winner of the Cochon Prize 2019. I would like to reaffirm our continued support to ending TV and to thank the Stop TV Partnership for their inspiring leadership. Thank you very much. Two, two things that many people might not be aware. First is that this is a, a prize that uh, is big in value. It's uh, $65,000 uh, that is going to the winner. It's small for the world or you know what other things are, but for us in TB, it's a value. The other is that it's not us in the Secretariat deciding this, but it's actually a committee uh, that discuss the applicants and decides that. It's a very thorough process and I'm very grateful for the members of the committee, including I see here in the room, uh, Paula and uh, Timur. Thank you very much, Paula Fujivara from the Union and Timur Abdulayev uh, from the Civil Society and Communities. Ken Castro and Mel Spiegelman are other two members of this group. Um, and uh, this year was, uh, uh, was not easy, but uh, uh, we uh, have a winner. Uh, is a unique winner. Uh, sometimes we split the prize. Uh, this time is a unique one. And uh, I have the pleasure in announcing that the winner of the Cochon uh, 2019 award is, is uh, Kellyn from Kenya, represented here by Alan Maleche. <laughs> Alan will say a few words, I would like to say one thing from me. You know, um, we, when we started discussing about human rights and TB several, many years ago, we had no idea what it is, right? And I tell what I told all the time, there were these global fund applications that were requesting a section to speak about human rights. And for several of us that helped countries in developing, what we were doing, we were doing cut and paste from each other because we had no idea what you have to do about human rights and TB. And then came Kellyn, that actually many years ago started fighting for the rights of people affected by HIV and TB. And for me, for many years, Alan and his team were the place to go when I had anything that was disturbing or was human rights related and lawyer and about lawyers, which is not a, a, a very awesome topic. For your perseverance and for your push and your, for your continuous fight, which is not always easy for him and his team, I really want to thank you and respect. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to the Stop TB Partnership, uh, the Cochon Foundation, and uh, Chairman Kim, who I have learned is also a brilliant lawyer, but in retirement, uh, for recognizing uh, the efforts of Kellyn and the work that we do to serve the communities who are affected by these diseases. I want, on behalf of my colleagues in the fight for justice uh, on matters of human rights, and the communities that we serve. I'm deeply honored to accept the Cochon Prize 2019 
uh, whose theme is Time for Human Rights, on behalf of my colleagues and Kellyn. Thank you very much to the organizers for putting this together. I further want to emphasize that this award is not only a recognition of the tireless work of Kellyn and the communities we serve, but also a wide range of organizations, both at the grassroots, national, regional, and global level, many of whom you saw on the stage this morning, reminding us about the importance of saving the lives of people. Some are in this room, and some are not in this room, like a dear comrade in the name of Dean Lewis, who passed away last year and had been a big comrade in the fight against TB. While we accept and appreciate the recognition of our hard work, we believe there's still much more to be done, as demonstrated by our colleagues here. And with the leadership of Stop TB Partnership and working on issues of community rights and gender, there's more to be done, whether it's offering litigation to people, whether it's training healthcare workers to observe and respect human rights, whether it's working with healthcare workers to have better workplaces, there's more to be done, and there are many amazing organizations that we have to work with, including TB people, including Lawyers Collective, who I know are going through a lot of turmoil now, but did a lot to be able to represent the client who wanted the medicine that she eventually got, but eventually lost her life. There are colleagues in Asia, there are colleagues in Africa, there are colleagues in Latin America, there are colleagues in Europe who we have to be able to ensure as funders, as donors, as development partners, we must find a way to ensure that funding goes to grassroots organizations who are linked to communities and where the money is needed to be able to take that work. So if there's one thing you want to do as a donor to be able to help change the life of people with TB and ensure human rights is the center of the response and that we achieve the targets that we have set in the high level meeting, then find a way, find an avenue to be able to get money to grassroots organizations to take this forward. I want to end by saying that an effective TB response must not only align to, but indeed be born of human rights. Human rights should chart the cause of the response to the TB because that is the only way we can deal with the global crisis. Human rights must be our true north if we are to win the war, and it is a war against TB, and win we must. It's time for human rights in TB. I couldn't agree more to this theme of this particular prize, and there is no time to waste. So ladies and gentlemen, let us get to work. We have lives to save and 40 people million to put onto treatment. Namaste. A big congratulations to Alan uh, and your team in Kellen. For sure, that has made some of us from that part of the world called Kenya very, very proud that uh, you have bagged this uh, particular prize. And uh, we look forward to your continued work in this area as you uh, identify the path forward for many of us uh, uh, working in TB and looking at human rights. So um, our ceremony is now drawing to a close. I would like to thank all of you uh, for being here uh, up to this end and to be in this conference and in Hyderabad. And I wish you all a productive, enjoyable conference. I am pleased uh, and I've been requested to invite all of you to the welcome reception, which will take place after the following Colors of India dance. Thank you very much.
जा आजा जिंदे शामी आने के तले है आजा जरी वाले नीले आजमाने के तले है 